and welcome Gahnawage Rono to a special edition of Our Town where we will be discussing the Combined School Committee uh, today along with a lot of the issues that are happening here in the community related to this um, issue, if you will. In recent times, the Mohawk Council of Gahnawage has suspended the all activities of the Combined School Committee and today in studio we have former uh, committee member, school committee member Nancy Deer and a former chair of the school committee, Tawny Bush, and they're going to hopefully shed some light and answer some questions today regarding this issue. It's very controversial. We don't want to discuss what happened back in January when um, the former director of education, Donald Hash, was fired. Um, we do know that it has snowballed into a much bigger issue than was ever anticipated. Um, up until that point, from what I understand, there had not been any really big issues with the combined school committee. Um, not enough to surmount to the suspension of all the activities. So this is where um, there, there are a lot of community members that are very upset and concerned with how it got to this point. Um, would either of you be able to elaborate on where we're at right now? Uh, well, I can't speak for the committee. Uh, as I'm, I'm no longer on the committee. I can only speak as a parent who, who's observed and I continue to participate in the meetings. Mm -hmm. But um, where it's at now is the combined school committee has been locked out, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. uh, from the, the education center and from performing their duties. And uh, that was just something that happened in, within the last couple of weeks. Yes. And now they have, you actually have to be buzzed in, from what I understand, to get into the education center. Right, right. Okay. Um, they were, through the suspension of the MCK, mm -hmm. uh, they, they stopped, the, the combined school committee was not able to perform their duties. Mm -hmm. and, the, and now, of course, yes, they've been literally locked out of the building. Do you know whose decision that was? No, I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. I, couldn't, I couldn't answer that. Uh, so what's continued to happen is the combined school committee, uh, re as recognized by the parents as mm -hmm. being the authority for our education matters, uh, where the parents' voice is heard, mm -hmm. continues to meet, continues to perform their duties to the best of their ability now and give it to, given their limited resources. Right. Well, that was one of my questions is how do you maintain power or accomplish things without having access to the education center? I'm assuming with great difficulty, mm -hmm. uh, but they have a lot of support. They have the parents' support. They have uh, students who are supporting them. They have staff who are supporting them in, in trying to perform the, their duties. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I guess, as, like I said, it is limited, but I can't really speak too much on how much they're able to accomplish right. at this well, point. Well, you know, and it has to be mentioned that we were supposed to have uh, the chairperson on today, Trina uh, DeLil. Unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond our control, she couldn't make it, but we felt that it was important at this time to move forward with this interview. We didn't want to you know, delay another week, so here we are. And I thank you guys for coming in. We're, we're also going to have um, members of the ad hoc, ad hoc committee coming in to uh, talk more on this issue. Um, but let's move forward still, so just so the community can understand the chain of events that have happened since the press release came out several weeks back. So the combined school committee gets suspended by the Mohawk Council. Now, I think it's really important to mention that some of the reasons why people are so upset is because it was a grassroots community group that had created the combined school committee that was never under the power of the Mohawk Council. Is this correct? Yes. And, and Nancy could speak more on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I'm kind of the, uh, you know, the, the, the former school committee member who was, um, on the committee in 1978, you know, when things started to change, when, when things started to come under the parents' control, uh, like kind of officially with the survival school and with all the, pro all the programs that came after that. Mm -hmm. But before that, you know, um, there was uh, the joint unification agreement and, and there was the unifying of the schools and the parents uh, were recognized and, st and are still recognized as the parental authority over education, you know, mm -hmm. uh, politics and, and um, education, you know, have been separate, you know, uh, MCK has been there as a um, support if we need political clout or if we, mm -hmm. uh, for whatever, in, in areas of financial, but mainly the 
the voice is from the parents. And that was even like before the Joint Unification Agreement. Joint Unification Agreement was, it took three years, you know, to unify the schools. We had Catholic and Protestant schools, and we had um, uh, everyone who uh, took part in those negotiations. It took three years in order for it to say, well, can it work? And it did work. And, and that's the only time I think in my memory that you had all factions of the community, Catholic, Protestant, and Longhouse uh, representation by the parents, you know, to, to, uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. And before that, it was parents. Parents have always, I mean, if you look in, into our culture, you know, uh, our matrilineal line, the women are responsible for the, for the children. And mm -hmm. um, so I think here in Gahnawage, we have, if we go way back in history, that, that's what we've done, and that's what we'll continue to do. So when this decision came out for me, myself, you know, uh, who was actively involved from the year 78 to um, probably till 86, uh, you already had the formation of um, the, the creation of Mohawk Immersion Schools, you had the survival school, operational and capital, you had the, um, the, the creation of the Gunawake Education Center to be the administrative body to who supports the combined school committee, right. which are represented by parents, chosen by parents, at, and um, you know, it, it was very shocking mm -hmm. to hear this drastic, drastic um, turn of events because it's almost as if uh, whatever, uh, I mean, I have no problem with parents making concerns, you know, but I, I believe that, you know, MCK should have heard both sides and I don't believe that's, that's what happened mm -hmm. and that it, um, it's causing more disruption and division and uh, hardship on everybody involved, you know, especially mm -hmm. the school committee, right? the present school committee. You know, given the fact that you have been so involved and you have a lot of the history, um, I guess one question that I have is, looking back, has there ever been any other tumultuous times in the history of the combined school committee where things got heated, but still the, you know, they maintained the sense of security and, and control and power. Has the Mohawk Council ever interfered in any other um, issue that may have happened in previous years, in the last, since well, the, the 60s? Years, for the years that I was on and for the years that um, people told me who are on the committee mm -hmm. and former members uh, of the Catholic or the Protestant committee, no, uh, not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, to say about any tumultuous uh, times, uh, of course, the survival school was a tumultuous time, mm -hmm. uh, the protest to Bill 101, but as a school committee member, we always went to the parents. We had mm -hmm. meetings upon meetings upon meetings, and we had hundreds and hundreds of people right. at the Casey Hall, and, and all every step of the way, we consulted with them and that, that's the only way the school committee will get their uh, authority and direction. Right. I mean, Tani, you're a former chair. It's, I mean, there must have been other situations that were just maybe not as controversial, but it's not the fir from my understanding, it's not the first time that the combined school committee has been faced with hard decisions or even things that got social, socially or politically challenged and has the Mohawk Council ever stepped in at any point and said, whoa, we don't think you're doing your job? No, um, I was, I served on the committee for about nine, ten years and mm -hmm. in my time on the committee I can't recall a time when when they they came into the degree that they're here now. Mm -hmm. They have, I have to say on, on their behalf, they were there actually in to, to support us through some difficult times. Mm -hmm. So, um, there were difficult decisions before uh, that were made by the combined school committee, um, the, the creations of the schools, the all-in-one school. Again, mm -hmm. we also all went back to the parents, and, and that's where we got our, our authority from. Okay. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and obviously we're going to continue on uh, discussing this issue. So don't go away. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us now or you're staying tuned, um, we're currently in studio with Tawny Bush and Nancy Deer, and they're both former members of the Combined School Committee. Um, once again, we're going to jump right back into it. 
So since the Mohawk Council suspended the activities of the Combined School Committee, there's been a lot of different committees created, or at least it seems like that to the average community member who may or may not be following the story over the last eight months. And things have developed pretty quickly since, since that day a couple weeks back. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind, there, I know that there was a lot of issues regarding the Constitution and what, who's following what and which Constitution is in place. And so if you guys don't mind clarifying which Constitution is currently being used and maybe we can talk a little bit about the committees and, and what they all mean. It is the 1996 Constitution that's being followed by the Combined right now. Uh, there are several draft forms out there, revised forms, uh, constitutions. It was um, a number of former committee members had tried to make amendments and bring it back to the General Assembly, but okay. because of the high turnover in, in uh, committee members on the uh, Combined, it never got that far. So there were a few different drafts floating around, and, and that's where some of the confusion came in. Okay. So right now you said they're using which one? The 1996. 1996, okay. Now, how many different committees are there right now functioning with Combined School Committee? Well, there's the Combined School Committee. Mm -hmm. There is the Ad Hoc Committee, which was uh, appointed by the Combined School Committee to address some of the issues parents are having now. Okay. There, is, there was the Steering Committee, right. which was also appointed by the parents through the Combined School Committee. Their mandate was to, um, to write up the guidelines for the independent investigation. Mm -hmm. They're sort of defunct. They're not operating right now, but I, I can't say that they're, they're gone. Um, then, of course, there's the Board of Trustees who are appointed by the MCK, and of course, then we have the MCK. Okay. I think I have them all. Okay. Uh, just a question that I know many community members are asking. Is anyone paid through the Combined School Committee or the Ad Hoc Committee? No. Uh, that is part of the Constitution. No committee member shall be remunerated uh, for their services. It's all voluntarily. Um, so it could be four hours a month. It could be 40 hours a month. It could be 400 hours a month. It doesn't right. matter. It was you do what you have to do mm -hmm. and in that capacity. So, and I would imagine in more recent times, it's a lot more than four hours. It's um, and the second time job, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and the reason why I'm asking is because some parents, community members are asking, well, is the Board of Trustees being paid? And if they are being paid, is that not community dollars? And where are they getting it from? Are they getting it from the Education Center? I don't know if you guys would be able to answer that at all. I don't have any information about that. Okay. I guess that would be a question best asked by, uh, um, to, to the Mohawk Council mm -hmm. uh, because we ask the same questions and we, we don't have a response either. Okay, because I know that the Board of Trustees co is comprised of uh, Franklin Williams, um, Trin. Rena. Rena, Sky, Daibo, Daibo and um, the three principals. The three principals. And is there not a consultant to this board also, Mike which would Dibble. be Mike Dibo? Yes. Okay. Yes. So last I checked, um, I could be wrong, but you know, consultants don't work for free most of the time, unless they're also, you know, and maybe that's a pretty profound statement that I'm making. But um, we're going to get to the bottom of that later on in the show, because uh, we do have interviews with Chief Carl Horn and all, also other members of the Mohawk Council, other chiefs mm -hmm. on council. Uh, Gusanahawe Sky Deer and Kenneth McCumber, and that's coming up, so stay tuned. Um, but I just wanted to know how much information has been provided to the Combined School Committee. Even though you guys are suspended by the Mohawk Council, there's still a lot of support in the community, so there's, there's information that's obviously not being flowed freely. And as a member of the media, I can tell you that I do not know that answer, that's why I was asking you. I know I have presented that answer to you, and it's important because uh, if you have a committee that was working for free and wants to stay involved versus being paid, and we're already so short, apparently, on community funds, it just raises a lot of questions regarding um, responsibility. So, Well, I think the bigger issue is, of course, that's a, it's an issue that mm -hmm. should be addressed, but it, as far as I know, time immemorial. Yeah. The, the Ganawagas Com Combined Schools Committee has always been volunteer and right. we don't really know anything about um, the Board of Trustees. Okay, and, well I just wanted to bring it yeah. up. Who is on the c current Combined School Committee now? That would be uh, Trina DeLille, Tina Stacy, uh, Brian Deere, 
Wayne Delormier, Lisa um, Daibo. Daibo. Okay, who else is Diane there? Deere. Diane Deere. Diane And I don't know if the new reps have been picked from the schools yet. Okay. And your ad hoc committee is comprised of who? Or their ad hoc committee, excuse me. Well, that was um, decided at last week's general uh, meeting. community yeah. meeting. Yeah. And I, uh, to do a, a specific function was to um, write the second letter to the MCK mm -hmm. in protest uh, to the decision that they made to suspend. Not recognizing it, um, it's illegal uh, that the Combined Schools Committee is basically still the representative, no matter if they locked them out or mm -hmm. et cetera. And also, they were also mandated for one week to work on the uh, Constitution, to bring you know, recommendations and, and, and a process to include the parents. And, and, and um, so uh, those, those members are uh, Deidre Diom, um, Garhio um, Kirat, uh, Lynn Bova, mm -hmm. and Tawana. Tawana. Okay. Tawana, I believe, four. Oh, no, and um, one more. This one. Um, Marie, Di Marie Daibo. Okay, Marie yeah. Daibo Robinson, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, and the reason why is, is, you know, again, all these names are floating out and, and there's a lot of people, you, you know, that aren't sure who's doing what and what is the purpose. And um, we wanted to discuss a little bit about the Joint Unification Agreement and the Constitution. Um, but first, I thought it was important to kind of identify what these groups are doing and, and try to clarify some of these issues to community members. Now, in terms of the current Constitution that's in effect, um, how do you guys feel about the Mohawk Council saying, well, this is one of the reasons why, you know, we're suspending activity was one, because of the list of complaints and also that we're concerned that there isn't an appropriate constitution in place that's consistent? Well, for the constitution, um, I have to say in, in the years I've been on, we've worked uh, using the constitution as our guiding principles. Mm -hmm. uh, is there amendments needed? Absolutely. Is now a good time to do them? Absolutely. But mm -hmm. those amendments should be made by the parents. Uh, in all the previous time, nobody ever questioned the Constitution. The integrity of the Constitution hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Constitution hasn't changed. And the intent hasn't changed. So to be so concerned about it, a working document, I mean, if one could argue, then MCK could argue the same about their um, their membership law. Mm -hmm. It also needed amendments and so forth. But so you can make a comparison there. It doesn't may erase the fact that there is a constitution in place and then yes, it needs amendments, but that's something that needs to be done by the parents who have children in the system who understand the spirit and the intent of the, mm -hmm. of the constitution itself and how that's gonna work for several generations. Right. And, I, and I'd like to uh, quote from the constitution of the Gahnawaga Combined Schools Committee. And Article One does you know, it's from the spirit of the Joint Unification Agreement of 1968. The principles of complete parental responsibility over education in Gahanawage as represented by the Gahanawage Combined Schools Committee and the rights of all the beliefs of pastoral services for all the students attending Goryunoha, Kateri School, uh, of high quality curriculum and programs and study throughout the education system established by the Joint Unification Agreement of 1968 are maintained and respected as basic rights for this constitution. So if you look at it, um, that's been honored from, from the beginning and, mm -hmm. and when this decision came down, uh, it, it's, it's illegal in like my eyes, I, and I'm not a lawyer, mm -hmm. but I see it as completely um, uh, inappropriate mm -hmm. uh, for the accusations that have been uh, uh, placed by parents who were concerned, uh, principals, MCK liaisons, um, and, and, and the complaints that we, yet I've heard that this combined school committee have not, have not had access to. I think that the investigation, whatever, if they want to call it an investigation, leading up to what they 
uh, rescinded the, uh, the, the MCR that was given in 1983 and 84, recognizing that the school committee, you know, through the M uh, band council is um, the authority, mm -hmm. the, the parents are the authority and they're represented by the combined schools committee, is um, that was just done as a formality. That was already an accepted principle Mm -hmm. that it was the parents. And, and for the funding of the survival school, which started in 1978, this uh, MCR was, Bank Council Resolution at the time, what it was called, mm -hmm. was only a formality that came from Indian Affairs to, to make sure that the money now is um, mm -hmm. officially mm -hmm. recognized from the Bank Council. They have to make Bank Council Resolutions, and that's right. what they did. Mm -hmm. and, and that was done together. And that was done in, 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 a, in a unity, you know, that mm -hmm. recognizing that, you know, parents uh, are the responsible for education. Right, and, and that's what, what we talk about in terms of the joint unification agreement being so important. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that is? Well, it's respecting past committees. It's respecting um, the decisions that uh, came from the parents respecting the authority of the parents. And to do this, to, to rescind that uh, resolution, it's almost, that's a paper, you know, and, and rescinding it, it's like, it's in the hearts and minds of all the people, mm -hmm. of all the parents. So all it did was only fortify the school committee to that, that they're, they're not gonna recognize it and, and deem it illegal. Okay. And, 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 and function. That's why they are functioning now. Right. And we are getting parental uh, support. I mean, uh, former school committees members like myself over the years have always supported when needed, when asked to come in and be, you know, be a support and be a resource. Mm -hmm. And, and offer that insight and that's history. What, yeah, and that's, okay. what we're, that's what I'm doing on behalf of past members. And really, you know, that's, that's, that's what we should do, respect the past and uh, honor the past and honor all those people. Mm -hmm. And in one, you know, in one uh, stroke of a pen, 11 pens, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's, it's, it's very damaging to, to the community and to the whole education system and most of all to our children. And we're definitely seeing that fallout now, no matter what side of the fence you are on at this point. But don't go away, we're going to be continuing on with this issue as we go to a quick commercial break, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this.